Today, we're going back to basics with how to apply transitions. So if you're new, this will be great. Even if you know transitions, you might pick up a thing or two. So to begin, in our effects panel, we have our video transitions folder. So these are separated into different categories like dissolve and wipes and etc. And to apply a transition, you simply want to take one of these and drag it either onto a start and or in between two clips. So here's what this looks like on the start of the clip. And you'll notice that if you zoom in a lot on your timeline, we created this little yellow piece of tape that says barn doors. So this is the barn doors transition. It opens up like some doors. Now, how did I make it go like I did in the intro example? This is when you can click on the transition. By default, these are just how they're added. But if you go to the effect controls panel, then you can adjust a lot of different things about the transition. So in this case, if I wanted to open up the other way, there's this little A and B section and these four arrows, I can click down so that it opens south to north instead. I can also adjust the starting point. So right now it starts from completely closed. However, if I wanted, I can make it start from slightly open. If you click show actual sources, it'll replace those placeholders with the actual clip and you can choose perhaps to start the clip open already halfway if you want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it like that. And oftentimes you do have other options in this menu depending on the transition. So in this case, you have border color, reversing, all of those things. So if I was to want to replace this with a different transition, I could just drag it over the current transition and you still have all the same kind of options. Now, if I want to apply a transition in between two clips, then I can just grab that transition and drag it in between those cuts. Oftentimes you'll get this little pop-up box saying insufficient media. This transition will contain repeated frames. This is not a error or issue. I actually have a whole separate video on this if you want, but basically all this is saying is that because we're at the actual end of the clip, when we go into the next clip, we're going to have to just use the same still frame for this part. And when we're going into the next clip, we're also going to have to just use the same still frame. And then once the clip starts, we can actually begin playing because we have footage. Whenever you're working with a clip, you can tell if you're actually at the end or the beginning based on this little triangle end cap. That means this is the actual end of the clip. If I was to just crop the clip in a little bit, you'll see that triangle end cap go away. That means that we actually have some, some more of the clip that is just not revealed. So if I were to apply a transition in between two clips, which were just cuts and not the actual end, you won't see that uh, pop-up message occur. So that's all that pop-up message is telling you. And you'll also notice that the tape here is solid, whereas the tape on the one with repeated frames is a little bit striped. But again, it's not an error. It's just letting you know that's what it's doing. So you have all these different ones. And again, you can go into the effect controls. You can stretch them out or in. Now, when you're working with a transition in between, on a two clips, it'll just apply symmetrically. But if you want it to apply a little bit more in or out of one other clip, so when your mouse gets this little slide icon going, you can actually move over the transition so that maybe it starts really close to the end of the other, but goes into a lot of the other. And then you could see the stripes actually begin right here on this frame. That lets you know that right here, Premiere had to start using repeated frames for the other clip. Now, another really useful thing to keep in mind is your default transition. If you notice under the dissolve, the cross dissolve has a blue box around it. That's our current default transition. That's what yours should be. And if I right click on any clip and apply default transition or use the shortcut command D, then you'll see it'll just apply our default transition. This can be a very useful way to just simply add the cross dissolve so that oftentimes you can just fade out or fade into a clip. If you do ever want to change your default transition for a particular project, you can right click on any of these and set that as the selected default. And it'll now have a blue bounding box around it. So if I were to do the command D, it'll now be dipped to white or right clicking, it'll be dipped to white. You also have options in the Premiere Pro preferences under the timeline section. 
the default duration. So you see when I'm adding these, it's automatically making them a certain amount of seconds. And if you always want to do them longer for some reason, you can just change that in the preferences. But typically I leave everything as is and I can just stretch as needed. So not only do you have all of these video transitions that you can drag in between clips, if I ever highlight them and I can just delete them, you can also experiment with making your own sort of transitions using keyframes and effects in Adobe Premiere. So if I go to an effect like Gaussian Blur, then I can add this effect on one clip, add it on the other, and I'll just use keyframes to turn it into a transition. So if I go to the effect controls panel near the end of the clip, I can start the blurriness at zero. At the end of the clip, I can increase the blurriness a lot. And then at the other clip, I can begin at that same large blurry amount. Make sure I toggle animation keyframes. And then I can slowly make it go down back to zero. So in this case, I've sort of created a custom transition using keyframes. And that's what I have so many dozens and dozens of tutorials showing different ideas of, like that about. You also have adjustment layers. So if I go to file, new adjustment layer, these allow me to apply effects over top of many different clips all at once. So you see how I had to apply the effect on both clips. Another way to have done that would be to simply add the effect on an adjustment layer over top of a sequence, especially if you have lots of cuts and stuff, and then just simply apply the effect so that we have three keyframes that occur in before the cut, at the cut, and after the cut. And it'll go from zero. Notice how I'm using these arrow keys to jump between keyframes and create them. It'll go from zero to a large amount, back to zero. And if I play that back, let's see what that looks like. Cool, so we've created like a little blur transition, this time with an adjustment layer. So even after I've created that adjustment layer, I can still go back and mix it with some other default transition. But my name is Justin Odisho. I've got a ton more of this on my channel if you're interested to learn more. And you can subscribe to stay tuned for all of my new future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.